Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt. Today I show you how to make a simple bourbon mash. So let's go. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I've done videos on a, a tequila wash, a rum wash, I've done a simple uh, sugar wash, I've talked about corn mash, uh, We've got a video on poaching mash. Poaching is, and I know I'm probably butchering that, but poaching is uh, Irish moonshine. So it's just an end bowl I was going to get around to finally making a bourbon mash video. The inspiration for this uh, comes from um, the fact that, this may not shock you, but uh, as someone who has a YouTube channel about beer and wine and alcohol and whatever, I actually watch shows on beer and wine and alcohol, and one of them I catch is moonshiners. Um, and being a, a home brewer, um, you know, there's two steps of the process. You make a fermented product and then you distill the product. Uh, and most of that shows about the distillation, and which makes sense. It's, it's called moonshine, for God's sakes. But as a home brewer, I kind of notice the, the front end, the, the fermentation process. And I've always thought, and what's always struck me is it seems like the guys in moonshiners, they understand the base basics of fermentation. I, I don't doubt these gentlemen have been doing it a long time. But you can tell it's it's not from, you know, reading a lot of books, studying online, da, da, you know, they don't visit a homebrew shop probably a lot, and that they probably aren't accomplished homebrewers. They're probably not at home making saisons or hazy IPAs, what have you. They just kind of know the basics. And one of the things a home brewer you learn is, well, there's simpler ways to do things, or that you learn some of these steps you can uh, eliminate. And, and the one I'm talking about, and what, again, what we're going to talk about in this video, or the premise is, if you've ever watched a show of Moonshiners or been to a distillery and watch a whole process, uh, they'll crush grains, do a mash in, uh, you know, they'll, they'll cook the grains, corn, if you're dealing with just corn, if you're making straight corn whiskey, corn itself does not have the enzymes in itself to convert starches into sugar. So either you have to add enzymes, doing like a alpha amylase uh, addition, or you have to add other grains, um, like rye or barley or whatever, that have excess enzymes in them that will then also help convert the corn to, to starch. It's a process. It's not that it's impossible to do brewers and people do it all the time but it's a process it's, there's an easier way and that's what we're going to do today uh, it's just do an easier method of this um, we one thing you learn in home brewing is that you have uh, extracts this right here is uh, barley extract barley's the predominant green in beer and they have either dried extract like this or liquid extract. It just makes your life simpler. Uh, some of these kits that I talk about, Mr. Beer, Brew Demon, whatever, the brew days like that because they have the extract done for you. They've converted the starches into sugar and they put it in a form that's easy for you. Um, real quick on bourbon, just do, uh, tech, go over the, the technical nuances of bourbon. There are several laws that bourbon has to meet to be called bourbon. Um, they go into, you know, how it's aged, how long it's aged for, what the proof is when it comes off the still, what the proof is when it goes in the barrel, what have you. For our context and for just the, the mash and the mash bill, 51% of the grains in that bill have to be from corn. More specifically, or, or the focus of that is of the corn, of the sugars that are there available for fermentation, 51% of them have to come from a corn source. Now again, most people will mash in corn, will malt corn, you know, what have you. We have something called corn syrup. Uh, there's also corn sugar, even though that's, you generally don't see a lot of corn sugar available like at the grocery store. Uh, it's also sometimes referred to as dextrose. Uh, but you can find this in a store. And they are technically pretty close as far as the amount of, of uh, how they affect the specific gravity of your mash, but also the sweetness level. One thing to watch for in these corn syrups, some of them add vanilla. And 
because this is in a somewhat liquid form, there's water in it, so it's not a perfect conversion corn syrup to corn sugar, but it's close enough for us. But they've done the work for us, just like with the malt extract. They've done the work for us. So that's how we're going to make our uh, bourbon mash today. Uh, the particular mash that we're going to do is going to be 70% corn, 15% wheat, and 15% barley. Uh, bourbon can come, bourbon, uh, besides being corn predominant, can add any other cereal grains to it. The most popular generally are rye, barley, and wheat. Rye is usually the second most popular behind corn. Rye, uh, rye gives bourbon more of an aggressive bite, a little spicy bite to it. Rye is kind of old school. You'll see a higher rye level in more old school bourbons. Um, some of the newer bourbons and some of the more popular bourbons now tend to have a higher wheat content because that produces a softer, a little more approachable bourbon. Um, so that's why I went more with the wheat instead of the rye. I'll talk to you later about if you want to add rye. So with that being said, let's get started. Let me heat, I've got a couple of gallons of water here. This is for a five gallon batch, but we just need two gallons of water first. Let me heat up this water. I'm gonna bring it up to boil. You don't have to bring it to boil, but I'm gonna bring it to boil for sanitation purposes. When we hit the boil, we'll come back, I'll add our fermentables and we'll go from there. All right, gang, so I brought a couple of gallons of water to a boil. I did that for a couple reasons. First, sanitation, and second, just the hot water will make it easier for the sugars to be absorbed because that's basically what we're working with, the sugar. Even though the source is grain, we prefer it to start just to sugar. So basically we're playing with sugar and you know that sugar dissolves easier in warm water. So like I said, brought it up to a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the heat. Um, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because any of you that homebrew know, if you throw dry malt extract into a boiling pot, you're going to get an overflow. It will foam up real bad. So you don't want you, you don't want this overflowing, this stickiness. So I'll go ahead and cut off the heat, and we'll go ahead and add our fermentables. While I'm doing that, real quick, I kind of want to talk about our recipe again to reiterate. Our mash bill is going to be 70% corn, 15% wheat, 15% barley. Um, bourbons with a similar amount of barley, um, again, this, this is not how they do it in a, in a distillery, but this is more like just an exercise for uh, all you uh, people that like to play the home game. Anyway, uh, bourbons with a similar amount of barley include uh, the Buffalo Trace line, that's Pappy Van Winkle, that's Weller. Um, I, again, I'm not claiming this is 23-year-old Pappy we're going to make here, but you get the point. Um, bourbons with a similar amount of wheat, or that are kind of referred to as wheated bourbons because we're not adding rye, we're using wheat as our, you know, as one of our secondary greens. Um, those include Larceny and Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark is probably the most popular of the weed at bourbons. Uh, actually, I remember meeting uh, Mr. Samuels, who, who uh, runs Maker's Mark years ago, and he, I remember the story was that they create the recipe from bread. That they, he always liked good soft wheat bread and always thought it just was a great flavor profile. And again, you're dealing with grains and yeast. <laughs> There too, so uh, he just thought they worked together and it, it's worked out great for makers. Uh, bourbons with a similar amount of corn, we have 70% corn. Uh, other bourbons are in that 70% range include Angel's Envy, Old Forester, and Woodford Reserve. Uh, so you can see, you know, we're, again, we're in the range of some of these popular bourbons. This, you know, the distillation process and the aging process, you know, plays a huge part in it. But again, as far as the mash goes, we're, you know, we're getting, you know, into those ranges of some of those other bourbons. Well, let me continue to add the rest of the fermentables into our pot and we'll let this cool down. And then we'll come back to do a gravity reading. And, and I want to discuss how this, how I got to this recipe because it wasn't just haphazard. Um, and kind of talk about the idea of creating a recipe in the first place. So let me get this done and we'll come right back. 
All right, so I've got all our fermentables in. We cooled down our uh, liquid, and now we're getting ready to pitch the yeast. Before we do that, though, I want to do a gravity reading, and I want to talk about how this recipe came about, because it's just one haphazard, and it wasn't necessarily a recipe I found online, because, I, again, I haven't seen anybody else not use flake corn or malta corn or whatever and use corn syrup instead. So this kind of a, a, I don't want to say a true original, but not, not something I found online. How I got to this point and how, again, if you want to create a recipe, we want to make alcohol. That's the whole point of this venture. And so we need something to shoot for. Well, the way we measure alcohol in home brewing, since we use a hydrometer, we measure specific gravity. You'll do it before fermentation, that's called original gravity, and then after fermentation, your final gravity. And the difference between the two, you, you punch it in a little formula, there's these calculators online, and it'll tell you how much alcohol by volume. Generally, the more sugars, the more fermentables, the higher the gravity, which usually means more potential alcohol. So here's how it kind of went about doing it. We know that if we're making a bourbon mash, the mash needs to be 51% corn. Well, I did my research, and corn syrup slash corn sugar, kind of interchangeable, adds roughly 40, 40 to 45 gravity points for one pound of corn sugar or syrup for one gallon of water. Well, since I had five bottles for five gallons, we've added 40, 40 to 45 gravity points. The malt extracts that we used, wheat or barley, they are generally around 45 gravity points. Well, you divide that 40 to 45, you divide that out, it's 8 to 9 gravity points that they add for the whole 5 gallon batch. We divide it by 5. Um, so between the two of those, you're adding another 16 to 20 on top of the 40 we got from the corn syrup. So now we're looking at anywhere between 1.050 and 1.060 projected gravity on this. Under normal fermentation conditions, we should get around 6, 6.5% 6 alcohol by volume. Why is all this important? Well, if I was a proper moonshiner, we know that, well, the more alcohol we get in our fer fermented product, the more alcohol we get out of still. So, 6.5% probably would not do for a moonshiner. It'd be able to work for our purposes. Um, but they want to get into the teens. So, Let's shoot for 13. All right, we're at six and a half. Well, if we want to get around 13%. Well, basically all we'd have to do is double the recipe in the same amount of water. So we'd get five more bottles of our corn syrup. We would get another pack each of our malt extract, or our, our barley extract, and our wheat extract. And that would should, I emphasize should, give us around 13% alcohol by volume. And that's how you kind of go about doing the math and kind of building out this recipe. So there, there, there is a little method to the madness. All right, so let's check the gravity. I got a new hydrometer today, so I'll, I'll know this will be accurate. Let's see where we're at. All right, I'm actually a little higher than I projected. I'm around 1.0. Oh, geez, I'm going to say 1.066, something like that. So we're going to be in the high sixes alcohol by volume if you're projecting out. Um, sometimes, you know, if we're making a beer, if your boil is just a little more efficient, whatever, um, I do have to say this. I probably need to adjust a spot or two because the temperature. Uh, my, my liquid's still a little bit warm, so we're in about the right range. Right? Again, 1.5 to 1.6, we're in the low 1.6s or mid, you know. Again, if I, uh, I'd have to get my chart out, but if I adjust it for temperature, we're probably in the right about range. So, with that being said, let me go pitch the yeast, and the yeast I'm going to use is, uh, I got a pack of Mutton's Active Brewing Yeast, just left over from my old kit. Um, again, we're at six something percent alcohol by, you know, we're, we're 1.065 or something like that on the gravity. That works just for that. If we doubled the recipe and then got 
you know, if we were going, you know, then we'd be around the 1.090 range, or a little higher than that, probably 1.1. Actually, we would be 1.1, or just a little over that, to get in that 13 range. Then you'd need a proper yeast. Um, the distillers use something called turbo yeast. There's other types of distiller yeast, and they're used to higher gravity brews to work through. But this will work fine for us. You can use any kind of yeast if you want to use regular bread yeast, uh, the rapid rise yeast. Feel free. Only yeast you can't use is nutritional yeast, and that's because the yeast cells and nutritional yeast are dead. So let me pitch my yeast, get the fermenter ready, uh, get this cleaned up, and then we'll come back to wrap up. All right, before we wrap up, I do want to talk about if you want to, if you see this and you're like, well, hey, I'd like to do it, but I like rye, I like a higher rye bourbon, how do we get that in? Um, in the research I've done for this video and just uh, the different brew shops I've been in, I have not seen dried rye malt extract. What I have seen and what I know is available online is liquid malt extract. Now you'll have to research the gravity points are a little different you know when you're trying to figure out a recipe but it is there. There's another way you can get rye into your uh, mash bill. Um, you could take right here I have regular rye uh, it's used in home brewing too. Uh, you could take regular rye crush this and you would put in what's called a muslin sack uh, that they use for home brewing. It's glorified tea bag, it's a good way to think of it. And you would take this and put it in your brew kettle before you added all the other sugars and everything else. You would put this in, you would, well, you'd heat the water up to 155 degrees, put this in for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. In that time, the heat will kick off the enzymes inside that would convert the starches to sugar. After after being in the water, like I said, roughly 30, 40 minutes, something like that, you would you pull the bag out, let it drain, and then just toss it. You've extracted the sugars out of that rye, and then you would go back and add in your other uh, extracts. And that's how you would get rye in there. If you wanted to, you could do the same with your wheat and your barley. And uh, in brewing, this is called a partial mash. You could do the same thing in making this bourbon mash. Um, and still use your corn syrup or corn sugar, dextrose, what have you. Uh, just again, about making your life easier. We are going to let this ferment, our five gallon batch, for, uh, if we were a distiller, we'd let this go for about a week. Uh, we're going to let this go for a couple of weeks. There's just something that occurs. If you give yeast a little longer time, it kind of smooths out your brew. There's some chemical reactions that the dead yeast actually will uh, clean up if you let it ferment longer. But because the bourbon people are distilling, they kind of clean that up so they're, they're not worried as much about longer fermentation. So, like I said, we'll let a, a bourbon, the people in the bourbon world would let this sit for a week and throw it in the still. They mix bourbon. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.